after 12 years, we're finally here. Avengers Endgame Whānau. Um, man, what to say? There's not much to say, like, other than it's been well worth the wait. So what started in 2008 with Iron Man 1 has led to now Avengers Endgame, the 22nd film in the Avengers uh, MCU saga. Um, and what a what a way to go out what a way to go out it was well worth the wait if you haven't seen it um I've, i put out a separate video a spoiler free video about endgame so go watch that one or go watch the movie before you come back here so forewarning spoilers all through this video so if you don't want to hear any spoilers this is me giving you all the warning you need so turn this video off go somewhere else because i'm going to get into it man like i've, I've been waiting for an event like this literally my whole life and it was well worth the wait for I So today is Monday, uh, the movie came out last week, Wednesday. And I'm going to start with the fact that uh, this movie has got the biggest opening weekend of all time. Over the weekend it's already made 1.2 billion dollars with a B, not, a, not an M, with a B. Uh, shattering box office records as it should have. Like it was always sort of toted to be that kind of movie and um, yeah with true Marvel fashion it has it's broken records um, this movie was directed by the Russo brothers Joe and Anthony Russo <clears throat> uh, they also directed Captain America Winter Soldier Civil War Infinity War and this movie so uh, this is their fourth movie in the MCU and man they're they're a blooming dynamic duo those two uh, amazing directing shout out to the writers uh christopher marcus and stephen mcfeely amazing writing team i saw an interview with both of them and they're talking about writing these movies sort of together so they knew what was going to happen and um oh, amazing uh shout out to the producer kevin feige he's the dude behind all of this all right now let's get into the nitty-gritty let's talk about um some of the main beats throughout the movies some of the funny parts the sad parts the quotes that i remember from the movie i've been to see it twice now and i'll probably go watch it at least one more time before it finishes at the movies shit it's it's freaking ridiculous it's ultimate like actually ultimate i've like i expected it to be amazing but this one just blew right out of the water this has gone to the tippy top of my favorite movies of all time. It's got everything. Like, in my opinion, it's got everything. Highs, lows, amazing story, amazing characters that you can actually care about. I know it's been um, 11 years worth of storytelling in order to be able to care about these characters a bit more. So that adds a lot more weight to it. Where Infinity War left off, we're on the back foot. Half the universe is still alive, half of it is turned to dust because of Thanos, he's on another planet. Everyone's all broken up and in disarray, as they would be, as we would be. The movie starts off like that. Captain Marvel saves Nebula and Iron Man from a floating ship out in space. And they've been drifting out there for 22 days. Uh, and the Milano, which is uh, Chris Pratt, Star-Lord ship. So she brings them down on the ship. They get back together with the Avengers, or the ones who are left anyway. And... Uh, the Avengers who are left are the OG uh, Avengers from 2012, from the first Avengers movie. They'll get back together, they had to plan to go and kill Thanos. Nebula knows where he is, they fly there, um, they get there, turn up and he's, half of his body's all wrecked from the snap. The snap's called the decimation if you didn't know. Uh, and he's just living a humble life, he's making him a feed, he's got like an old t-shirt, lives in this like little log cabin looking thing. The Avengers turn up him and beat him up, Thor chops his blimmin' arm off with Stormbreaker the axe and then um, they talk to him and their plan is to get the stones together and unsnap the universe, unsnap and reverse what he's done but little did they know Thanos had already destroyed the stones before they got there and he says a cool ass line and he says um, I'm inevitable and he talks about the stones being there only for temptation so they need there's no use for them anymore, so he destroys them. Thor chops his freaking head off, and then that's the start of the movie. That's like 15, 10 minutes into the movie. It cuts to five years later, you're like, shit, now what? Like, I was, I was like, what the hell happens now? Everyone's sort of trying to come to terms with the fact that they've lost. They've truly lost. It's been five years and nothing's happened. They don't know what to do with themselves. Captain America's running like a like a help group, like, uh, like an AA, Alcoholics Anonymous sort of group. PTSD, people talking about 
you know, what they do with themselves. And he pretty much says just, you know, we have to find the strength to move on. And one of the dudes in that group is Joe Russo, who's one of the directors of this movie. He always puts himself in his movies. Cuts to, oh, the, the movie starts off with uh, Clint Barton, uh, Hawkeye, him and his family. So that's where he was during the events of Infinity War. And uh, his family disappears, so that's how the movie <laughs> opens up. It's pretty sad. Anyway, it cuts to uh, San Francisco, Ant-Man. So the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, he's in the quantum realm and he gets stuck there because everyone else turns to dust and no one can pull him out. This rat walks over the control panel and ends up activating the quantum tunnel, which is how he gets into the quantum realm and he blasts out. He comes back, um, he doesn't know what's happened for the last five years. Um, he's freaking out post-apocalyptic world and he ends up going back home and his daughter's five years older now and they embrace and he ends up going to the Avengers facility and he comes up with a plan to go into the quantum realm time travel time travel is in this movie it's a heist it's a time heist to go back to before Thanos got the stones and collect them and then come back to the present time and then unsnap the universe and get everyone back um Tony Stark lives out by a lake now like a log cabin with Pepper, Pepper Potts, and they've got a child. Uh, her name is Morgan. She's about four years old. This he's sort of reluctant to do this time travel stuff because uh, they, he's not sure that they can survive, and also he's you know what he's gained. You know he's got a daughter now who didn't exist before the decimation, and he doesn't want to let that go. But he ends up sort of figuring out how to time travel safely. They end up splitting into groups. Uh, one group goes to New York back in 2012. And that group is Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Hulk. And Hulk, at this time, is Professor Hulk. So he's Bruce Banner's consciousness in Hulk's body. And it's amazing. It's like cool. It's cool that they've done something different with Hulk after all these iterations of Hulk over these last 11 years. And this is something we definitely haven't seen. It reminded me of like the Incredible Hulk cartoon with the Grey Hulk. How Grey Hulk was smart. And he could actually talk normally, but he had the strength of a Hulk. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. It was like, tickled my childhood memories of the Incredible Hulk cartoons. Um, yeah, so to them three and Scott Lang, Ant-Man, they go back to New York 2012. And the reason they go back there is because there's three Infinity Stones <clears throat> during that time. And also, all of this... They've only got a limited number of pin particles, which is which allows them to go into the quantum realm. And they've only got enough for everyone to go back in time once and to come back to the present once. So bearing in mind they have to succeed or they're buggered. So, um, yep, they're in New York 2012 during the events of Avengers 1. So it's got the blimmin' the first camera wrap around of the avengers assembling for the first time and it's super nostalgic super cool and the uh, iron man and ant-man their job is to get the tesseract which is the cube and inside the tesseract is the space stone which allows you to travel across the universe captain america's job is to get the mind stone which is in loki's stuff and hulk's job is to get the mind stone which is in the eye of agamotto which is the necklace that dr strange wears so hulk goes to uh the sanctum sanctorum which is in Belika Street, I think it is. It's a bit of a reference um, to the street it's on in New York. He goes there, and at this point in time, Doctor Strange isn't Doctor Strange yet. He's just Stephen Strange, who's the surgeon. So um, he gets there, and the Ancient One is wearing the necklace, and he asks her if, if he can have her. She says no. Knocks him out of his body. Knocks Hulk out of his body, so it's his spirit version. Uh, they get an argument. <clears throat> He tells her, he ends up telling her that um, Doctor Strange gave the stone to Thanos willingly and she's like perplexed by it and she's thinking like why the hell would he do that? And then she thinks, oh she knows that he's the best of them, best of the Sorcerer Supremes and um, she gives it up because she knows that he must have done it for a reason. She gives the stone to Hulk or to Bruce Banner, um, Tony Stark and Ant-Man. They hatch this plan, they end up getting the, oh no, they fail. They fail getting the Tesseract, <clears throat> and Loki ends up getting it. So bear in mind that at the end of Avengers Assemble, Avengers 1, Loki's a prisoner. So in this version, he's he's got the blooming thing covering his mouth so he can't talk. He's um, handcuffed up and the Tesseract ends up at his feet. He picks it up and teleports somewhere else, so they fail that. 
uh, Steve Rogers, he ends up, there's a cool bit, there's this cool bit, he goes into the elevator, it's all these S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who are the actual Hydra agents, if you've seen Winter Soldier, you know the ones, and um, they pretty much reenact this whole scene from Winter Soldier, and it's the elevator scene, so he's in there and you're thinking like, shit, he's gonna bloom and beat them up again, and this is gonna be some fan service, and then he leans over, because he knows, Captain America knows that they're Hydra agents, and he um, whispers into one of their ears and says, Hail Hydra. And of course they're going to be like, oh, well, he must be on our team. Because there's no way he could know we're part of Hydra. <clears throat> so they end up giving it to him. They end up giving the staff to him. He walks off. It's pretty funny. Um, anyway, he goes down and he ends up coming across the 2012 Steve Rogers. And then they get in a fight and it's cool. Like, it's blooming evenly matched. Um, our Steve Rogers ends up winning and he beats him up and he... Knocks him out with the Mind Stone with the staff, and then he um, <laughs> he looks at him. He's lying down, face up, or oh, face down, and his bum is facing up. And before this, uh, Tony Stark remarks, uh, Captain America's tight suit, and says, "That does nothing for your ass." And Scott Lang says, um, "That's America's ass," <laughs> and it's it's funny. And then um. Captain America is looking at the passed out version of him and his ass is sticking up and he says, he looks at it and he's like looking around and he's like, that is America's ass. And it was just funny, like hilarious. Everyone was fun laughing in this um, theater. Carries on. Uh, so that's, oh, they end up, you know, failing. They didn't get the Tesseract. So they had to go back further in time. Cap, Cap and Iron Man, they go back further in time, back to the 1970s, to the army base. Uh, the army base is called Camp Lehigh, which is where... Um, Captain America, Steve Rogers turned into Captain America with the Super Soldier Serum, um, Peggy Carter is there, this is where Stan Lee's last um, cameo is, and he's like a love not war um, protester, he's in the car and yeah, it's happy, sad moment, um, Robert Downey Jr. ends up getting the Tesseract, oh Tony Stark gets the Tesseract, he bumps into his old man, and his old man's holding these flowers and he's about to go home to see his wife because they're pregnant with Tony Stark and it's it's this full circle thing and the way that uh, Tony Stark left his parents before they died uh, in Civil War you know wasn't on the best of terms so he was yeah it was real heartfelt this whole he had these cool exchanges with his dad and end up finding where Jarvis comes from and Jarvis is their butler he's the driver of um, Howard Stark who's Tony's dad and yeah it's beautiful all this is cool um, Steve sees Peggy Carter she doesn't see him, he's looking at her through like um, some blinds through a window. And <clears throat> so they get the Tesseract, they get some more pin particles so they can go back to the present. Uh, Nebula and War Machine, they go to Morag, which is the planet where the Power Stone is. And that's the planet that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 starts. So the, the planet where um, Star-Lord is dancing and all that. It's that. And um, they go in, they get it, teleport back. All the stuff happens with the past nebula and the present nebula and their um, mind ends up getting sort of linked and the the past nebula she's still bad <clears throat> he ends up switching places with the the good nebula and she ends up coming back to the present so that's the power stone uh and the last stone is this oh no there's two more stones the reality gem which is in the ether and asgard uh rocket and thor go there Thor bumps into his mum, he says all this, he has a big talk with his mum and he's sort of got anxiety now and he's like real hopeless. He's overweight now, Thor's overweight and he's overweight through the whole movie. Like fat Thor's what you get and it's it's funny and it's cool, he's got a blimmin' giant paho, long hair and he's looking like the big Lebowski, the dude from the big Lebowski. And he even gets called there from Tony Stark during this movie and it's funny. He goes there, um... Rocket pulls the ether out of um, Jane Foster, who's Thor's missus. So that's uh, they go there during the event of Thor Dark World because she's got it inside her. <clears throat> they get that and just before they're about to leave, um, Thor puts his hand out and he calls on Mjolnir and it's ah, oh, it's cool, it's beautiful. And when he gets it, he kind of like has this moment with himself and he says, "I'm still worthy." After even after all that's happened and you know him going through his depression and all that, he's still worthy to wield Mjolnir. And you come back to the present, and then the last stone is the Soul Stone, and uh, Clint, Barton, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. Um, them two go to Vormir, which is where the Soul Stone is. They climb up the mountain. They see Red Skull. 
waiting for them. He already knows they're coming. He talks to them. They go up and they have to sacrifice one of them to in order to get the soul stone. And on their way there, there's another bit of fan service. Um, so through all these Avengers movies, and they've always referenced Budapest. And they reference it first in the Avengers Assemble, the first movie. And uh, Clint, while they're f flying through space to Vormir, he says, we're a long way from Budapest. And I thought that was cool. Anyway, they have a fight with each other to try and sacrifice themselves for the other person and for the greater good. Ends up... Off the cliff, hanging off a wire, Clint is holding um, Black Widow and then she pushes off the wall and falls down to her death. And um, he's broken and he ends up having the soul stone and they all end up back to, at the prison. They bloom in time machine are back to the prison and they're all happy as, you know, and then they start looking around and uh, Bruce Banner asks where's, where, ah, jeez, never mind, Black Widow anyway. He asks where she is and then it's obvious that she didn't make it, so they're, they're real sad. Um, <clears throat> anyway, they Tony Stark has made uh, an Iron Man version of the Infinity Gauntlet to put the stones into. They put the stones into it, and they have a little argument about who gets to do the snap. Ends up being Hulk, because it's mostly gamma radiation, and he's mostly gamma radiation himself. That's how he turned into the Hulk. Puts it on, and he's freaking out. Tony says, um, make sure that um, you, know, you just bring everyone back. And everything in the last five years has still happened. So just bring them to now. So he could still have his daughter and, you know, have his family life. He snaps. Blimmin' whole right side gets mounted up. His arm is, like, all burnt looking. And it's skinny compared to his other arm. Um, and they succeed. And just before that, the bad nebula. She played up, or played with the time machine. And then blasted Thanos and his ship and all his crew into, into the sky, into the present day. So they survived. And then um, he blimmin' levels the whole Avengers blimmin' facility and <clears throat> all this rubble. He comes down, he tells Nebula to go find the gauntlet. Thor, Iron Man and Cap walk out and they see him and they go for blimmin' ultimate fight. They're fighting and then um, Thor's wielding Stormbreaker and Mjolnir at the same time. And it's cool, like, it's like mind-blowing stuff and <clears throat> they're fighting him and he's ultimate and Thanos is mean as even without the gauntlet and without any of the stones so they're fighting him and then there's a part where Thor's almost down and uh, Thanos is holding Stormbreak and he's pushing it into his chest he actually pushes it into his chest a little bit and then um, Mjolnir smashes him and Mjolnir goes flying back and then freaking Captain America catches it and you're like oh shit let's go and then um Captain America just turns into Super Saiyan and he like starts chucking the hammer at him. He even brings down some lightning on him. He hits his shield. He chucks his chucks the hammer at the shield. It's amazing. And then Thanos gets a second win and starts smashing Cap and breaks his shield. And then it ends up with a standoff. Uh, Iron Man is like wasted. Thor's wasted somewhere in amongst that whole battleground. And then Iron Man Arth. Oh, Captain America stands up and he tightens up his shield, his half-broken shield. And he looks at Thanos and Thanos just talks about, he, he says this mean speech. He talks about how he doesn't take anything personally, but he's gonna... He says he doesn't take anything personally, but he says he's gonna enjoy destroying this um, annoying planet. Or these people on this planet. And um, he his army comes down as a whole shit and then... Out of nowhere, you hear a voice talking in Cap's ear, and it's Sam Falcon. He says, do you read me? And then he says, on your left, which is another fan service. And it's a reference to Winter Soldier, the opening with Captain America saying, on your left, when he keeps running past him at the start of the movie. So, yeah, that was another full circle moment, and it's beautiful. And then all these, oh, this one portal opens up first, and it's a sorcerer portal. So it's the ones that um, Doctor Strange and... All the sorcerers open up. And then out walks King T'Challa himself, Black Panther, uh, Shuri, his sister, and Okoye. And then behind them is all the Wakandan army. And frick, it's cool. And then all these other portals open up. And everyone who has who died from the decimation all come back. Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Valkyrie, and on her flying horse. All the Wakandan ships the wasp even she's there freaking 
Pippa Potts turns up in her Iron Man suit and it's called Rescue, I believe. Ah, it's just blimmin' ultimate giant man. Oh, Ant-Man turns into giant man. Hulk's there, blimmin' war machines in a new blimmin' ultimate suit. And it's just blimmin' like mouth-watering build up to this the ultimate the most ultimate fight you've ever seen and then um they get into this freaking huge fight and all the while trying to get the infinity gauntlet to uh ant-man's van to try and return all the stones to the uh right points in time so thanos can't use them all this stuff is happening um you know there's blows exchanged uh thanos ends up raining down on all of them because he's about to lose to Scarlet Witch. He rains down fire and then um, the the guns from the ship start pointing up and just shooting out into the sky. And then Captain Marvel finally turns up. She was out in the universe just helping other planets and stuff. And she just flies literally straight through the ship, destroys it, destroys everyone inside. And she just literally goes Super Saiyan on all of them. And then there's this cool bit with all the all the ladies and. They help Captain Marvel get through to the van and um, on their way there, Blimmin' Thanos destroys the van so they can't teleport back in time to send the stains. Um, he ends up with the glove. Oh, there's heaps of stuff that happens. He ends up with the glove and he's like trying to get ready to snap. Um, Captain Marvel jumps on him and freaking smashes him. She's looking like she wants to break his fingers. He headbutts her, does nothing. And then he's clever and he pulls the... Um, Pulls the power stone out of it, absorbs it into his other hand, freaking smokes her in the face, and she gets knocked out somewhere. Uh, and then he's going about to snap. Tony turns up, Blimmin grabs the glove, and then he gets knocked off. And then Thanos goes for the snap, and it doesn't work because the stones are gone. And then it cuts. And he, before he said that, before he did the snap, he says, "I am inevitable again," for the second time in this movie. And the snap doesn't work, and then it cuts to um, Tony Stark, and he's like this. And then the um, the stones are coming up, and they're going into place. And then he says slowly, "I am Iron Man." And he freaking does the snap, cuts to white. Um, all the all the enemies start turning into dust. And then Thanos just looks around and he starts walking to go sit down. And you know, defeated, defeated, he sits down and then he looks at the camera, or just off the camera, but he just sits there. And, just take some deep breaths and starts turning into dust and just before he fully vaporizes he looks down and oh it's like poetic justice um although i do empathize with him because the reason he's doing all this is because of overpopulation and under oh, and lack of resources for that population so which is what we're pretty much getting faced with these days so obviously it's an extreme version but um yeah and then tony stark after all that, he's he's on death's door. Um, Rhodey, War Machine, turns up. He sort of embraces him a little bit. Um, Spider-Man turns up, talks to him, and he's like crying and stuff. And then Pepper Potts turns up, and she moves him, and she kneels down to him. And he's he's like, he's not even there. He's just looking up, just trying to, like, breathe. And then um, half his face is all blacked up, munted up. His whole right side is all burnt and <clears throat> ruined from the snap and she looks at him and she says we're gonna be okay um you can rest now and when she says that he takes his last breath the light in his chest turns off and then he dies and it's freaking sad like the second time i watched it was more sad than the first time um then it cuts and he has like a funeral a send-off and they've got like a uh a wreath of flowers and in the middle of that wreath is his um ah uh, but the core, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one from the first one, and it says proof that Tony Stark has a heart, and it's laid to rest in the lake, and it floats off, and it goes through all of them, and all of them are there, and they're all in their um, funeral attire, all blacked out, and it's beautiful, and it's got the kid from Iron Man 3, uh, the kid who helped Tony Stark in Iron Man 3, he's there, and he's grown up, and it's the same actor as well. Um, and Nick Fury is there as well, a beautiful send-off, and then it goes to um, uh, another time machine that they make to send Steve Rogers back in time to um, send all the stones back. And then he gets sent back and then it's supposed to be five seconds when he comes back. Five seconds comes up. He doesn't turn up. Uh, 
Bucky and Sam look to the left and he's there as an old man and Sam talks with him and he's lived a full life and he gives the shield to Sam and he's going to be the new Captain America and then it it cuts to back in the day when during his time and um, he's having his last, he's having his dance finally with Peggy Carter and it's a reference to, Aven or to the first Avenger, the first Captain America movie um, where he he says he's going to take her out for a dance and just when he's about to fly into the ice he says we're going to have to make a rain check on on that dance and then he finally gets to have his dance with her and then they kiss and that's the end of the movie and ah, oh, too much to handle and this movie is amazing and they've got no end credit scene and uh, everything was just amazing definitely go watch it uh, there was a shitload more that I could have covered but uh, I wanted to keep this video just shorter than 30 minutes um, but yeah I love you 3000 no deal to find it